What is going on guys? I am Anibi Cobra and welcome to Star Wars The Old Republic Game Update 5.10 is here, which means Jedi Under Siege, and with that comes an entirely new level of gear. I'm going to be showing you how to be getting that gear and the numbers you want to shoot for in your stat distribution. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, on your character, go to your starship. Wherever you're at, go to your starship. Once you're loaded into your starship, you want to move over here to your mission terminal is all the way on the other side here because I had to pick the biggest starship in the game and from this mission console inflection point is the mission you're gonna want to pick up this will begin the Jedi under siege storyline this story takes place after all previous story elements in Star Wars the Old Republic uh, do you want to do this are you sure yeah I do if you don't want to skip ahead to this point in the game you can do all these other expansions Force Alliance the Shadow of Revan Knights of the Fallen Empire, Eternal Throne, or Firecraft, Fractured Alliances. Um, do all those storylines, and eventually you will get to Inflection Point, um, naturally. So once you do that, um, you're going to go through the story. Just click on the little button right here. That'll take you to Odessa. So we'll go there, and we'll speak to Lana. And just follow this main story quest. It'll tell you where to go. Uh, I'm not going to show that for spoilers, because... If it was me, I wouldn't want to know what the story was. So, finish this main story quest, and after that, I will show you where to go from there. So, after you finished your main story quest on either faction, and they are different areas um, on Osis, depending on which faction you're playing on, this is the Imperial side. You're going to come to this mission board right here, uh, and you're going to pick up all these dailies. Also, you have the weekly Masterwork Data Crystal. This is going to be the main way for you to get your gear, not only at the 252 level, but also to upgrade it to the 258. So doing your weekly Masterwork Data Crystal mission is important, so make sure you always grab that. And just grab all the rest of these dailies, because there is also a weekly for Osis. Grab that for Heroics. Weekly Daily Area Osis. And this mission is going to give you a lockbox, uh, depending on which lockbox you select once you complete the mission, will determine what gear you get. So where do you actually get the gear once you've gotten those weekly Masterwork Data Crystals? Well, in the imp base, it's going to be down here. Elevator slow. Alright. Uh, so one way you can get them is this mysterious smuggler. There is one of these in the Republic base as well. Uh, so if you just start this conversation with him, he will exchange 500 unassembled components for one Masterwork Data Crystal. If I were to make this exchange, I uh, would get one Masterwork Data Crystal. After that, I could talk to him again, and I could get a second Masterwork Data Crystal every week, but the second one's going to cost me a 1,000 unassembled components, not 500. There is also... I might already have it, but up here in the end base, which is way over here. Way over here. This courier droid has a time-limited mission. I already have this mission right now, so if I go into my mission log, it is this one. Weekly event, master mode flashpoints. Okay, calm down, I'm working right now. Jeez. I was frozen in carbonite for like five years. Complete master mode flashpoint 04. This will also give you a master mode data crystal. So if we do this mission, if we do this weekly, and this weekly is actually defeating the two world bosses on Osis, or doing 50 group ranked arena points. That's five points for every win, one point for every loss. So a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 50 group ranked arena. So with those two, and then with the two that you can buy from the Crystal Smuggler, that's a total of four Masterwork Data Crystals you can get per week. All of these missions will reset weekly. And I do also want to mention that this courier droid over here that gives you the time limited mission, it is not always for. Ah! Oh crap. <laughs> it is not always for master mode flashpoints. Uh, there have been times that it has also been get, earning eight medals in a single ranked or unranked Warzone match. So that is an option too. I prefer that one because it's only one, not four master or four master mode flashpoints. This is the area where you're actually going to purchase your gear. So if all you have is Masterwork Data Crystals, if you talk to this equipment vendor, he will give you the 252 gear for two Masterwork Data Crystals. It is automatically going to filter it for your selected discipline. So I'm currently a Marauder playing Carnage, so it's going to show me all the things I can buy from Marauder Carnage. You can change it to all, and it will show you everything that is available. So if I say I wanted to get... Um, this one, which is the Merc Healing set. 
I could grab this Merc healing chest piece, I could rip the mods and enhancements out, put it into some legacy gear and transfer it over to my Merc. So there is a way that you can farm for other characters. So once you have the 252 piece, which I don't have any on me right now because they're all in my stronghold, but then you come over to the Masterwork vendor and I can trade that 252 piece in for a 258 piece. Now these do require a certain standing with Osis Assault Battalion, which is the planetary reputation. For most of them you do have to have legend status. That will take you a minimum of five weeks to obtain legend status. As you can see, I can't buy this chest piece right now, but I could buy these gloves if I wanted to. So what I need to buy these gloves is I will need the three Masterwork Data Crystals, and I will need the shell of the previous gloves, the Experimental Osin Weapon Master Gauntlets. So to get a 258 piece, if you're only purchasing with data crystals, is going to be five. So five data crystals for each piece. So I'd need this glove and three data crystals, and I could trade it in for this glove to get the 258 piece. One other change that the developers have made with this is it used to be that these mods and enhancements, the armoring has always been bound to a specific slot. So if I rip an armoring out of a glove, I have to put it into another glove. It used to be that you could move the mods and enhancements around. You can't do that anymore. The mod and enhancement is now bound to a specific slot. So if I were to rip the mod out of this piece, I would have to put it back into a glove. Same thing goes with the enhancement, which makes it more difficult to min-max, but not impossible. So now I'm going to talk about how to min-max with these new changes to gear where you cannot switch the mods and enhancements around to different pieces um, and I'm gonna give you a basic overview for what most DPS classes will want to take uh, I'm gonna be throwing a lot of numbers at you so if you're not a numbers guy or if you don't want to listen to me talk about numbers down in the description I do have all of my notes posted so be sure to check those out so let's talk numbers the very first number you're gonna want to shoot for is your accuracy rating your accuracy rating should be as close to 110% as you can possibly get it. It's okay to be a little bit under, it's okay to be a little bit over. So with these two enhancements in my gloves and my boots, you can see that I'm at 712 accuracy rating. The target number you're trying to reach is 737. So I'm only 25 points below the accuracy rating. It is possible to miss anytime you are below that 110% accuracy rating. I'm personally okay with this because when I upgrade these enhancements from the 252 to the 258 pieces, I'll be at 746 alacrity, which will put me over the 110% mark. So I built this accuracy here, anticipating that I'm going to upgrade to the 258s. If you're uncomfortable with having lower accuracy cap, you can throw one accuracy augment in. That will take you up to 808 accuracy rating, which will put you well over the cap. The next stat that I want to talk about is going to be crit. I generally try to keep my crit around 1650. As you can see, I'm at 1599 right now. Again, as I built this setup, once I get to the 258 uh, crit enhancements, for instance, in my main hand weapon, uh, my chest piece and my legs all have crit enhancements in them. So once those get upgraded to the 256, that should put me right around that 1650. So the crit multiplier you're looking for is roughly 70%. The third stat that I'm looking at is Alacrity. Now I've recently learned a little bit more about how Alacrity works in Star Wars The Old Republic and it's based on breakpoints, specifically when talking about how Alacrity affects the global cooldown. Uh, you see I'm currently at 15.82% Alacrity. The breakpoint for a high Alacrity build, which I recommend for most classes, the breakpoint for a high Alacrity build is 13.39% or 1857 rating, so 1857 points. Contrary to how accuracy works, I do not want to be below this breakpoint. So I want to be at 1857, as close to it as possible without going under. 1856 is a big difference from 1857, and that's because of how alacrity affects the global cooldown. If I hover over Dirty Blast, you can see in the bottom right of my screen there, that Dirty Blast has an activation time of 1.30 seconds. That's because of the amount of alacrity I have in my gear, which means that the global cooldown is also 1.30 seconds. If I were to take one piece of gear off, remove some alacrity, now I'm at 13.88%. Dirty Blast now has an activation time of 1.32 seconds. One would think that that would make the global cooldown also 1.32 seconds, but it doesn't it makes it 1.4 seconds. 
So it's important to meet those breakpoints. Now there are some differences. This is on a Gunslinger, with that number being 1857. Most importantly, no matter what class you're playing, your alacrity percentage should be 15.39. In the so that is your standard gearing. Remember those numbers, 15.39% alacrity, 110% accuracy, and as close to 70% critical multiplier as you can get. Those are the numbers you wanna shoot for. Hope this video was helpful for you. Again, all of my notes are down in the description and I am listing the different builds for uh, the Innovative Ordnance Mercenary, the Carnage Combat Marauder, sorry, the Carnage Marauder, the Arsenal Mercenary, and the Lightning uh, Sorcerer. All my notes for those individual classes are down in the, in the description below. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment. I'll do my best to uh, answer them. Or if you want to ask me directly, find me on Discord, my Discord number, or my Discord handle and tag, whatever the hell it's called. I don't know what it is. All that is down in the description as well. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked it, be sure to leave a like on it and subscribe for more tutorial videos. I have plans to do several more coming in the future for specific classes and specific rotations. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. I'm NAB Cobra. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.